Hey y'all, ladies, how y'all feel? Fellas, y'all all right out there? Okay, let's get into it, honey. Today, we are going to be making shepherd's pie. This is my recipe for it. All right, first off, we're going to start off by cutting up our mashed potatoes to get them going and to get them flowing while we make our ground beef mixture with vegetables okay so as you can see i am cutting up the potatoes i'm cutting them with a knife most people use a potato peeler i'm old school taught by my mother and we use a knife honey we ain't got time for no potato peeler whatever floats your boat do what's best for you as you can see i was peeling those potatoes putting them in the water to let them soak that helps them soften and to clean them from all the uh browning from the potato peels now i don't know if most of you know but the most healthy part of the potato is the peel portion of it although we cut it off it is still the most healthiest part and we really should eat it we can eat it it is full of antioxidants and it's healthy for us okay you see me getting those potatoes peeled up so I can go ahead and get started and get ready to build this pie. Look at me cutting them potatoes one by one, baby. It's better if you do it also because sometimes them little potato pillars don't work right. Huh. But you do what's best for you and I'm going to do what's best for me. Because in the words of Miss Tabitha Brown, baby, that's my business. Yes, because it's really my business. Let's get this shepherd pie going, 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 going. If you have not already, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tina E. 103 again that's tina e 103 all right so we're going to go on to the next step and we're going to put a little bit of salt in the water that the mash excuse me that the potatoes are going to boil in and that's to help them soften as well we are going to get ready to ground up our ground beef let's season it i use laurie's I use about a tablespoon of Lari's, excuse me, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of Lari's, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of that Badia Saison season. This is my favorite seasoning right here. This green one right here, it is my favorite. It tastes really good to me. And a little bit of black pepper for a little bit of tang to it. Go ahead and mix that up and brown that meat up. Brown that meat up. Make sure it's brown. Or you can make it a little bit of red and rare. However, whatever floats your boat. But I'm going to do what's best for me because that's my business. I put a little bit more seasoning on there because I see it's still a little too red. I wanted to be a little color add a little color to it, a little flavor mix it up mix it up again watch that meat get brown take your time don't rush it because you don't want to eat scorched ground beef if you never had scorched ground beef you wouldn't understand you trust me you don't want to taste it. it tastes burnt like anything that's scorched burnt um anyway keep mixing let's check on our potatoes they're almost getting ready to boil. Ground the meat continuously. And then after you ground the meat, you make the meat sweat. You're going to see the fat begin to come up. You can also make this with ground turkey. You don't necessarily have to make it with ground beef because I know a lot of people don't like to eat beef. But you do what's best for you. I do what's best for me. Ground the meat up again. And then we're going to strain the meat. You want to get all that fat off of that. I put that back on the stove so I can drain some of the fat out the pot as well. I'm going to put it back in. Now to the good part. We're going to start mixing in our vegetables. And we are going to make our gravy so we can make this a thick mixture and build that pie the right way. Mixed vegetables. You can use any type of vegetable that you want. I like mixed vegetable. Yes, I use the frozen bag. Sometimes I use fresh as well. Mix it up. Mix it up. Then you're going to add a little bit of flour. You only need about two tablespoons of flour. Sometimes you might not even need that much. Later on in the video, you're going to see me add a little bit more flour because I like my mixture a little thick because when you put it in the oven, it is going to... um not only thicken up more but it's going to rise i like my pot of rocks baby excuse me mix it again mix it again mix it again a little bit more flour a little bit more cold water make sure it's cold mix it again mix it again mix it again this the key heavy whipping cream 
that's going to really thicken up that mix and get it to the right consistency so we can build the pie oh browning i use browning for color if you want to make dark gravy you use browning and you're gonna season this mix again because you got to remember you done added all this flour and all this water this probably done took all the flavor out of the meat that you have just added in there season it again so you can re-add the taste and re-add the flavor to the mixture mix it again mix it again then you're gonna let it cook for approximately i'm gonna say about 10 minutes so it can simmer and thicken it only takes about well on my stove it only takes about 10 minutes because this stove cooks extremely fast add a little bit of cheese because i like cheese mix it again look at it all nice and thick and creamy yes it was so good to allow it to thicken some more and then as it thickens you want to take it off of the stove to cool because you don't want it too hot as you begin to build your pie um you want it to simmer a little bit and then we're getting ready to make these mashed potatoes okay everybody know my infamous mashed potato recipe honey how do you get those mashed potatoes nice thick and fluffy First, you got to mash them up. That's right. Use the masher to mash them up. And then you're going to need a little bit of milk, some butter, a lot of butter, not a little bit of butter, a lot of butter, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And as we go on in the video, y'all are going to get ready to see what it is that I use to make the mashed potatoes, baby, consistent and fluffy because I like my potatoes fluffy. I don't like them old dry old potatoes. I like fluffy potatoes. Boom. They go to the secret right there. That hand mixer, baby. Don't be afraid to hand mix it with the mixer, honey. Because sometimes that spoon don't get it all together. Hand mixer. Good little swirl and twirl. Ooh. Now let's build. We have our ground beef and vegetable gravy mix. You're just going to pour it in the pan. Just like that. Spread it out evenly in the pan. And begin to put the mashed potatoes on top. Take your time when you put in the mashed potatoes on top because you don't want cracks and creaks at the top of your pie where you have a uh, ground beef mixture on one side and then you have mashed potatoes on the other side. You're just going to spread it out like a pie, almost like you're icing the cake. Almost like you're icing the cake. You're going to spread it out evenly on top of the ground beef mixture. And then you're going to put it in the oven for about 15 minutes on 350. Now, granted, you can use a deeper pan than this. Sometimes I also like to use an actual pie shell. I'll have to make a video and show you guys how that one works out. And um, it's, it's best to use a deep pan because the gravy mix will rise up. The gravy mix will rise up and that's okay. Um, I like lines for, to rise up because I want everything mixed together, honey. Just, ooh, it tastes so good. And as you finish spreading out the mashed potatoes on top of the beef and gravy mix, like I said, you're going to put it in the oven on 350 for about 15 minutes. And once it's um, in the oven for about 15 minutes, let's put it in there for like 10 minutes. And then you're going to take it out and put cheese on top of it. And then you're going to allow that to bake for another five minutes, baby. And here is your ending product. Shepherd's pie made by me. Follow me, like, and subscribe my YouTube channel. Okay, bye.